there, everybody. Welcome to Movies Are Real for December 2023. Happy not holidays. Happy 2024. Awkward podcast that does at the end of the month. Hello. Um, we're here to talk about the movies of the month of December 2023. The last month, which is always uh, scary. Because uh, then I think about, oh, we got to do like a four-hour podcast. <laughs> right. Um, but it's the job we have to do. No one else is saying what are the best movies of the year. No one else is giving awards out there. Isn't that right, Ryan? I can't believe no one else has thought of this idea. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Ryan. It's beginning to look a lot like podcasts. <laughs> this this not holiday season. Mm-hmm. Carrie, oh, Carrie. You uh, are, how do you feel, uh, you know, this isn't the actual podcast of like where we'd say what's the best, but how did you feel about 2023 now that we're looking back on it right now? Oh. Um, pretty good i don't it's definitely not a year of like personal heavy hitters mm-hmm, for me mm-hmm. yeah i feel like that's kind of a shame. i feel opinion. the same i think so too usually but, i feel like i say that at least every year it feels like right. a classic george thing yeah. he says uh but there's some ones that i really really like so yeah. and there's still a lot we have yet to see that just started yeah classic um but we are here to talk about some of the last things that came out in 2023 that we saw um, yeah. yeah, we're recording this the day before the Golden Globes. <laughs> Let's go. Interested to see how that goes. Um, I think, uh, I don't think there's any ones I'm closely looking, f- uh, like, I'm, like, really interested how it's gonna pan out. Uh, other than, I am very interested, uh, how animation goes, because there's two big heavy hitter, uh, films in that, and that is The Boy and the Heron and, and Spider-Verse, and I'm very curious how that's gonna go. I have my opinion of... When we get to the boy and the heron. Um, but yeah. All I'm hoping for the Globes is I hope Past Lives sweeps everything it's in because I think it deserves it. It was slept on. It's very good. Is it? It's very good. But it's not slept on. <laughs> well, like, it's it's like from a... <laughs> or at least all the Letterboxd people have fucking seen it. It's like one of the most, like, yeah, True, watched. but like, it's it's from a while ago, so I feel like people aren't talking about That's it as true. much. People are always like... They think about only the stuff that came out in December. That's true. That's like what counts. I guess that's true. All and right. And we get like weird stuff like... Uh, Wonka. Wa- Timothy, Timothy Chalamet Wonka How being best you? actor. <laughs> he deserves it, Brian. Mm. Speaking about December, folks, am I right? The first movie we're going to talk about is May December by Todd Haynes, director of Carol, a movie I desperately still need to watch. Uh, it's on Netflix and you'll watch it at some point. Starring Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman. Uh, produced by Natalie Portman as well. Um, yeah, this is a movie here. I Apparently May, December is a phrase people said. Mm-hmm. I've I have never yeah, heard it in my I, yeah. life. I looked it up because it's like, a, from what I saw, it was a phrase meaning an age gap relationship. Mm. But that's what I saw. I, I never I've never heard, heard of it. I've heard that phrase, a May, December relationship. I just never asked or figured out what it mm-hmm. meant. Mm-hmm. Apparently it means when you're in your 40s and you're dating a... Char- I was going to say, Charles Melton's movie. character also didn't know what it meant. And then <laughs> Julianne Moore had explained. Uh, anyways, we are, this is a movie where uh, Natalie Parman plays an actress who's visiting uh, Julianne Moore and Charles Melton, who's, I guess he's... Is he newish? Is this item his first movie? I've he never is, heard of he, him he, I found he is... He escaped Riverdale. Oh, oh yeah. okay. He is, he, he thought, People they, either come from Riverdale or Euphoria. Uh, yes, <laughs> yep, yep. A hundred percent. So anyways, now the part I think now that I think that now that Riverdale is, is like ended or ended, I think now the actors are finally free to do other things. <laughs> Julianne Moore uh, got into a relationship with uh, well, Julianne Moore's character. Uh, Julianne Moore. I don't know her name anymore. Julianne Moore is playing a character in this movie. This is not about actress <laughs> Julianne Moore. Different to other movies where she, we discussed. Yeah. Where actress. she had a sexual relationship with a third I think so. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, played by Charles Melton. And uh, Natalie Portman is going to be doing, uh, is going to be playing her in a film. And so she's here to, I guess, embed herself in the life of uh, of Julianne Moore's character. And Charles. I don't remember. What the fuck was her name? I'm trying to think of it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I, I can't, can't. I don't have it. Either. But anyways, yeah, it but yeah, she's here to embed herself to hopefully. And also, not only did she have this relationship with this child when they were 13, but after she went to jail, they just continued being yes. in a relationship. <laughs> Throughout his adult life, had two adult, kids. And they had no, three kids. Three, three kids. kids, and now the latter ones are. They're graduated. all graduating. Yeah. School, yeah. Uh, so it's coming at a moment that's like so. Essentially, the house is going to be empty. It's just going to yeah. be them. 
they're I'm, gonna be ep- empty nesters and he's like 33 yes yes <laughs> which is crazy yes <laughs> yeah in uh yeah so natalie parman's here um gracie gracie okay yes um so this movie <sighs> nominated for one of the best comedy or musicals at the golden Globes. it's it's a it is a a funny move is a movie with funny moments that are made even funnier thanks to the music. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, specifically a moment about hot dogs and oh, the re- if we have enough or not. Um, so yeah, I guess that's that's a place to start with this movie. Um, so this is a movie that um, its subject matter is very intense, uh, and it's it's pacing and it, it's pacing the soundtrack. And the the moments between uh, Natalie Portman's character, who's the actress, talking to Julianne Moore and uh, Charles' character, like when she gets like like confronts these moments, um, it is super tense. But at the same time, uh, the movie has moments where like it just has like I don't even know, like it's like it's comedy because it comes out of awkwardness. I don't yeah. even know, I guess, because it is a comedy in that sense. It's like. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely an exercise in discomfort. Yes, it, it, it is a hundred percent an exercise in discomfort. Like, ah, this sucks. <laughs> I hate being in this and seeing this. Um, but it is done again. That that, that uncomfortableness is delivered a hundred percent thanks to the performances of his characters, the script, and the music, and also the way the movie shot, which is very slow and link. It, it gets shot like a thriller. Um, even though these are just conversations with people, um, again, subject matter being, yeah, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I don't know, Ryan. What you What you think? Very good, very good film. Um, I like how, because like part of it is Natalie Portman is not only just interviewing um, Julianne Moore's character, but also various people in the town. Yes, who like have a relationship with her in some sense. So like the lawyer for the case and like the the old boss of the kid when mm-hmm. he was in the pet store that they would met pet store when they met and got caught doing something yucky. Um, and it's interesting, like seeing like everyone else, like even when she's not like in the scene, you feel like the weight of what she did to this small community and like how everyone just like, this sucks, but I guess we now have to live with it <laughs> because uh, I don't know. It's just that's what what can what can we do now <laughs> at this point? Mm-hmm. Um, and that is that is very interesting. And then also just seeing um, a lot of how um, the kid uh, Riverdale guy, you know, how he is doing uh, with his life. I like his little. I like his little side project of how he's really into monarch butterflies. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very cute. Very nice. <laughs> um, and it's also very funny when he's, you know, smoking weed with his son for the first yeah. time. And you see this very young looking man be like, oh man, that, that, that good kush, am I right? Um, it's very, very awkward and, and uncomfortable, but very good performances. Um, I definitely hope uh, the guy who plays uh, River Charles Gilda, Melton. Charles Melton, I hope he gets nominated for some stuff because I think he it's very good. did yeah. a really good job with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Carrie, what do you think some thoughts on this? Um, I agree with you guys. I don't think I liked it as much as most people, but I still really enjoyed it. It just didn't, maybe a hundred People really love this movie. Yeah, yeah. I don't, and so I see that, and I don't feel that, but I still like the movie a lot, and I agree that the, that the, uh, Charles Melton is the highlight for me, and also the part, you mentioned it when we were seeing Night Swim the other day, oh the part God. where Natalie Portman's doing the book. Are you It's okay to be scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is another great moment it's, it's all subtle like we all assume that natalie Portman in this universe is maybe some big shot actress because of the way people react to her but right. this movie goes on maybe I think not i think you're just like a weird actor <laughs> yeah. who's choosing this movie for like not cool reasons yeah yeah, 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 yeah. um so yeah, fun time so yeah good stuff on netflix um It'll probably do very well, I think, at awards season. It's a big, it's a big, like, it's one of those, like, performance movies where, like, the performances really are it, but, like, I don't know. I feel like it's not one that, like, has Mm -hmm. a lot of room over time. Like, I don't think it'll be remembered years from now, unfortunately. 
That is how I feel about just a lot of Netflix films anyway. I mean, it doesn't help that they don't make it an event out of their big movie. No. Like, like I said, like, I think, uh, oh my God, what is the director? Lulu Wang? Is that the director of The Farewell? Yeah. Like, but she mentioned it, like, she had a like, very good uh, roundtable where she was talking to a bunch of the directors, and she was like, I had an offer from Netflix, and I had an offer from A24. The, the A24 was less money, and the Netflix one was more money, but I knew if I just did Netflix, it, it would just come out, and then, like... AT Fork has that like branding where a little bit where like they elevate the the, the, the people involved with it and directors, so it's like mm-hmm. it's probably better long term if I went to AT4. Uh because something just goes on Netflix and it's just like, I don't know, it's just yeah. it's on there, I guess. Riley Cooper, watch this. <laughs> oh my god, I, I, I cannot wait till that gets that I feel like that's already been buried on Netflix. Yeah. I'm not here like I'm I don't know if you were like, yeah, it's it's a movie. Yeah. I that has to be one of those like not this is the movie Maestro, starring, You're talking about Maestro. starring and directed by <laughs> Bradley, Cooper. Bradley Coops. Um, and Carrie Mullen. I feel like that's one of those, like, I don't know how, but, like, Bradley Cooper's agent just convinced, like, all the critics in Hollywood that he is a big shot. People like, like The Star is Born. People really like it. Yes, but if you take Lady Gaga out of that, then it's a nothing movie. She's just a very good It's also singer. the third remake of... Mm, or four, of, is of a... Fourth? Third, third. Of a Hollywood third. classic, yeah. yeah. That's about Hollywood, too. Yeah. So, of course, Hollywood loves that, but whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I feel like he's tricked people into thinking... It's like when Adam every movie that Adam McKay makes, mm-hmm. like, it's nominated for... It's like, why that? Like, it's fine. Like, but like Yeah, but, like, why is it nominated for Best Picture? Like, I don't know. That's how I feel. Netflix's people are very good at... They're not good at marketing their movies to the public. But they're very good at marketing movies towards the people who do the considerations. Because, yeah. Anyways. But then the mo- then no one makes any money but them. And, yeah, exactly. And, the and do they make money? Forgotten about. <laughs> it's a question if they do. The executives definitely make money. Again. Everyone else does not I, this make has been any a, This has been a big year of everyone asking streamers, like, so, like, how does this make money? Actually, because how does a Killers of the Flower Moon, a movie that costs $250 million, and Argyle, a movie that costs two hundred fucking million dollars. <laughs> How does that help Apple? I don't know, but I hey, I like Killers of Flower Moon. I don't know about Argyle. I wouldn't market it as from the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughn, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Moving on, we're getting off track of me. It was from the imagination yeah, of John Paul. Krasinski. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <and> Paul Feig. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, May December, pretty good. Not the most funnest movie to watch. I might watch it again in a movie theater. We'll see. The Boy and That Damn Heron. That Boy and That Dang Heron. The new movie by Hayao Miyazaki. It's a new movie since uh, The Wind Rises. Uh, with an English voice dub of Robert Pattinson, Christian Bale, Dave Bautista. Uh, yeah, I forgot he was the... He's the, he's big, the Captain Parrot. Big man. Yeah. Big boy. Um, and Florence Pugh and Willem Dafoe. Um, stacked cast, stacked voice cast. Um, again, I usually I imagine like this is not. It's a relative. I wonder how like because these are always been they've they've been stacked forever. And I don't know. It's like, hey man, it's a Miyazaki movie. Come on, like, do you want to I've, do it? I've, what are you just I've go to read, voice booth. <laughs> I've read a lot of stuff about the the cast just because like there's not a lot, but for most of them they were just like people like heard and was like, hey, I want to or like people like like me. It's like, hey agent if you hear about any miyazaki let me movies, know yeah. i will do it yeah. i don't care what it is that's what vibe it gets like yeah yeah like, like so i imagine it was the same thing as like oh i'll do it because like especially like christian bale i think he's the one i read is like yeah if they're ever doing another one i would i want to be in it mm-hmm. he was was he how yeah. he was he, he was the how he had that ma- he owned that moving castle yeah, we bought a moving, moving castle, castle. <laughs> um so yeah, I guess who wants to start with this dang boy in the heron? I don't, I don't. So it's it's about it's very similar to like Spirited Away. Yeah, it's very similar to Spirited um, Away. Young boy, um, he he loses his mom in like um, World War Two, like war stuff. Yeah, if, if I, remember I can't remember right. what time period it took place. But in. then he moves to the countryside with. Um, a new mom and he discovers you know this weird tower his dad is like a general or he's in charge of something because there's a he's in charge of a plant that manufactures like planes yeah so yeah but he discovers this mystical tower and it's guarded by this weird just like obnoxious heron that's always like laughing and like i hate you you dumb bitch <laughs> um 
And then he goes into the tower and he goes on a big mystical adventure to find his uh, new stepmom. Um, so very similar to Spirit Away in a lot of ways where, you know, young kid kind of annoyed at, you know, parent stuff, but eventually goes on an yes, adventure save to save them. And similar to that, it has its own, like, you know, whimsicalness, uh, great animation, um, mm. interesting world. The, the, the understanding the, the mysticality of the world is a lot more confusing than... Let's yeah. say spirited away, I would say, just because like I don't really understand this. There's a lot of subtext in this. It's movie. a vibe for sure. Yeah. And that's that's mostly where I'm at is like this is so pretty and like so imaginative. I like those I, frogs. I, the frogs are great. I loved all the bird stuff. A lot, big of, fan of, that. A lot of poop. A lot of bird poop in that movie. <laughs> Lots of bird poop. Um, so in the at the end of the day, I really liked it. It's it's a great vibe. It's nice to see a classic hand drawn animation thing again. Um, and it still looks great. And then the English cast is fantastic. You would not know Robert Pattinson as that was wild. Was it is wild. He's so good. There has I, not been any VO booth footage out of, out of that. No, I would love to I, see. I read. <laughs> I read a thing of someone. T- the, the 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 like voice director for America. Like apparently he was like nervous about. Oh, Robert Pattinson. Like he didn't know. And, but then like, what Robert Pattinson came like was like. So I did some recordings last night. Oh, I want to. Yeah. I want to run down what he thinks. Voice memos on his phone. And he had like a bunch of different voice memos, and he was like, "Jesus Christ, <laughs> how do you do that with your voice?" <laughs> that that guy clearly didn't watch uh, Devil All the Time or <laughs> no, that, he that one not. movie where he played a French king or whatever. The- <laughs> <laughs> that guy's the master of funny little weird ass voices. He is. That man can. <laughs> Yeah, he can transform his voice, and he does more in this than he's ever done before, and it is <laughs> it is so impressive. Um, I know there's a lot of anime people who are like, you know, subs over dubs, but like, this is a very no. good dub. This is, <laughs> this is so good, and all of the dub people clearly care and want to be a part of this. Yeah. This isn't like... The only yeah. weird dub in Hami Miyazaki I've seen is like Burt Reynolds in Princess Mononoke as that. It was really weird. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> was that Burt or is that um, Bad Santa? Isn't that not? Who, what? Is that not oh, Burt Reynolds? Okay. No, that's not Burt Reynolds. That's, um, oh my God, who's Bad Santa? Billy Bob Thornton? That's it. Billy Bob Yeah, Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton's like, like Burt Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just feel like there's this idea of like, you know, like the old anime voice acting where they just got guys sure. around the office like you could do a voice <laughs> of a squirrel it's like oh sure <laughs> but like i don't know everyone here is really passionate about it. they go all for it robert Pattinson gave <laughs> more effort in this than he's ever done at anything that that is saying something um so yeah for yeah, that reason i liked this a lot um i can <laughs> recognize some issues with the story and it's nonsensicalness but it's just very nice and pretty and a good time overall. Yeah. Carrie, what'd you think of this? Um, I agree that it was like I found myself being like, what is going on? Why is there <laughs> yeah. a man playing with blocks? Who is this? We're in a different dimension. But you know, uh if you can kind of parse through it, you can get some meaning out of what you can you can glean what he's trying to say a lot of the time, but uh the visuals are amazing, obviously, and I was mostly there for Robert Pattinson to be yeah. there, but and so that that delivered, <laughs> but not not really one of my favorite Miyazaki's I've seen. Yeah, that's also where I'm like I think uh, I and I didn't go with high expectations because I, I didn't. I think it's weird to go. I don't think it's good to go in a because all the all of his movies are like so different. Like I don't even know what I'm expecting to walk into when mm-hmm. mostly when I go to his movies. Um, and I remember being the first time I saw The Wind Rises, which was a while ago. Um, when it came out, I was in a, I, I bet I like that movie now more, but at the time I was very like, huh, that's weird. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just thought like, it looked pretty and, uh, I don't know, it's cool to see one of these movies, but I was very much like, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. I was kind of bored at points. I fell, I fell asleep at points. <laughs> um, I wish there's more weird shit like the frogs. I like the frog part and that was, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I also am like... <sighs> I feel weird about uh, this year because the in 2023 we're gonna have it's gonna be um it's either gonna be uh, this Boy and the Heron or Spider Verse gonna win Best Animation. Not and, the Super Mario Bros. movie. No, no, I don't think it's gonna win. Oh, and so I'm very thank God because <laughs> I and I I I felt very 
shitty, but it's true how I, this is how I felt. We're walking into it. I was like, I don't think I'm going to see anything in this movie that looked as good as Spider-Verse. <laughs> <laughs> or as like, whoa! Um, I just felt like I know what, what I'm... I've, he's made a lot of movies, and I don't know if he's going to blow my mind with this one. Um, and I walked up, I was like, yeah, like, spectacle visual-wise, it's... It looks nice. It looks good, but it's, it's. I know what I'm getting out of him and the team there. Um, I'm very curious how folks the votes go down for Oscars and Golden Globes at animation. But yeah, I'm sure that team. If the the animation Oscar is always weird because it's like it's usually Disney or right something else, but uh, it'd be cool. It, it, I feel good that the Spider Verse team is gonna win, and I think <laughs> I imagine it'd mean a lot to that team that made that movie. They'd be like. You sure? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, that movie looks spectacular. Um, but yeah, this movie's fine. It's it's all right. It's uh, yeah. There was again. This is probably the mo- well. I don't know if it's how, where it ranks in uh, U.S. box office for Miyazaki movies, but I know it did very well. And when the movie theater I went was packed with like pe- young kids and and adults, mm-hmm. which this movie is maybe not <laughs> the most kid friendly. This movie has like a kid get fucking nuked in the skull like concussion <laughs> just like <laughs> fucked for the rest of his life like so he keeps on walking or he just bashes his head and starts bleeding but I, was, there's a kid behind me i was like mom i want to go home <laughs> <laughs> shut up oh, i've no. waited 10 years exactly <laughs> exactly and the dad's all like no you don't understand <laughs> um so yeah anyways uh, boy in the hair it's all right um this isn't for you. You're my excuse to see this. <laughs> yeah. I saw <laughs> I saw the Paw Patrol. Oh, I saw Five Minutes of Freddy's. This is for me. <laughs> uh, completely different. Not animated. Eileen. Uh, Anne Hathaway. Thomas and McKenzie. Uh, based on a book. I don't know if it's of the same name. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this movie here is sort of a thriller. Uh, Thomas and McKenzie... Plays, uh, I think it's Boston? I think it's Boston. It's somewhere around there. Yeah, that seemed like what Anne Hathaway was doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't like Thomas McKenzie's accent. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Eileen. Movie about uh, Thomas McKenzie works as a sec assistant yes. at a... At a, she's at a, a juvenile prison. Juvenile prison. It's a, like... An what administrative... Her... Yeah, yeah. Because she's, she's yeah. supposed like to do... Office... Administrative assistant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, she gets more involved than she maybe should have. That's why I was confused. I was like, I don't know if you should be doing this. Um, and uh, Anne Hathaway is the new director of the facility. She's coming in after the old one left. She's doing, like, therapy. Yeah. She's the Psychologist. Men- mental health in charge. Yeah. Lady. This takes place, was it nine? Is it 90 or 80? I can't. Oh, God. I'm not sure. It's definitely a period piece. Yeah. yeah. It's older. It, it's older. <laughs> um... And so, yeah, right away, Anne Hathaway uh, takes a specific interest in the case of one young man. And uh, what's up with that? And Thomas, no, not, with, not Thomas and McKenzie. Well, like, where well, all the guards were like, he's fucked up, man. He killed his own dad. Fuck that guy, or whatever mm-hmm. the hell. Um, and uh, Tom. 60s. 60s. Oh, yeah. okay. It was really old. <laughs> I guess that checks out. Uh, and Thomason's character is uh, really interested in Anne Hathaway because she's really cool looking. She mm-hmm. smokes, she smokes a cigarette, and she's uh, you know she's got the big blonde <laughs> hair, and she looks at her like you know with her eyes half closed, like you know it looks really cool. She's really cool. She's very cool. She's very pretty, um, and so she she like wants to get close to them, and then they wind up they go out for drinks and. Uh, that means a lot to Thomason and uh, she, a regular healthy friendship. Yeah, <laughs> ro- uh, an interesting working relationship <laughs> happens, and then stuff gets even weirder. That's, that's just what it's like to have gal pals okay. from work. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know, Carrie. What'd you think of this movie? I thought this movie was really awesome. I just like immediately from the get-go with the cool font at the beginning yeah i was like now nah, this movie's gonna slap just because you can just tell all of the style and all of the like femme noir weirdness mm-hmm. is just all 
we're here and we're, you're strapped in and you're just let all of the unpleasantness just kind of happen to you. Which is not in the marketing. No, no, no. I mean, I knew what to expect because okay. I had read the book. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's gotcha. go. All right. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, it, it was fantastic. And I think this is the first time I've liked a Thomas and McKenzie performance. Like, I yeah. think her accent's a little well, spotty, yeah, What about old? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, wait. I need to watch old. At the time, I was like, no, "What I, planet are you from? Why are you talking no, like this?" To be clear, I love old. Like, <laughs> I don't think anyone gives a great performance in old, though, except Vicky Krebs. But I just love her. But, uh, but yeah, because I think this is the first time I've seen her play like a little weirdo. Like, I, I feel like she's always played twee. Yes, or, that's like, that's a big thing. And I'm I like, think. Yeah. Now this now this fucking works. You being a freak works. <laughs> I like that. But so that was fun to see. And I think, uh, when I, uh, the, the author of that book, Otessa Moshpe, Mosh, I don't know how to say her last name, but she's extremely popular. And this is my favorite. I read a few of her books, but this is my favorite book of hers that I've read. And I'm glad that it was the one that got turned into a movie. Yorgos Lanthimos was originally attached to a, a making of one of her other books called My Year of Rest and Relaxation. Which was set to star Emma Stone, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen. I think that might have turned into poor, poor things. things. Uh, <laughs> okay. Interesting. All right, uh, Ryan. Uh, yeah, I like this a lot too. It was it was a lot of fun. I love a good, a good nice easy thriller. Um, I like I like Thomas and Mc- I-, I like the idea of Thomas and Mackenzie. So seeing her in something a bit better is nice um i wanted to ask carrie if this deviates a lot from the book yeah me too i was curious this no, pretty much from from my memory of the book this is pretty pretty standard okay i don't remember i don't remember any glaring things that have been left out but it's also been quite a while since i read the book okay. so i don't have a play-by-play in my mind i meant to reread it but i didn't get around to it yeah i just love any like kind of thrillery <clears throat> kind of stuff set in the 60s it is it's just like a good look it reminds me it's obviously a very different movie from like The Shape of Water, but like the look of like the prison and the look of like the weird government place, like that aesthetic is kind of similar, and I'm a big fan of that baby. That's all I gotta say. Um, yeah, I love the vibe and look of this movie a lot, and uh, I, I, my, I feel like um, my high rating on Letterbox and my. Like, I like this is like an eight out of ten for me. And I think it's a lot of vibes and a lot of just style. It's a lot of the tone. Um, the part within the bar, the warm colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, even though I know Thomason's maybe a little f- a freak, um, there's still something about that, like, it's not a date, but it's a date uh, sort of tension um, that I just really, really loved. Um, and I also fucking loved the i mean i didn't love i just horrified the climax of the movie mm-hmm. uh, where we confront um why why that kid killed his dad um i was like truly i've seen a lot of fucked Aunt up pleasant it was really like <laughs> that was horrible yeah we get a lot of, we watch a lot of movies with a lot of fucked up monologues this yeah. might be one of those. that was awful <laughs> yeah. that was it's, horrible yeah, i remember reading that and being like I, I don't. Oh. It's like, oh, you can Yikes. really put those words in a sentence together, can you? That's crazy. Oh, should you? I don't know. It's really mean, rough. That yeah. sucks. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, could you say that is Anne Hathaway maybe overacting? Maybe a little. I don't know. I think that she's. I disagree. I think she's a little like. She's clearly like troubled by like what's going on and how deep she's gotten into the shit. Mm-hmm. Like, this has gone way too far. Um. Uh, like the the wine bottle, like the whole like I can see. Got someone say like that whole section when they're at her house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people say like this is okay, but um, it just it it just feels like uh, she's having a lot of fun with the role. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that build up at her house. It's really good. Very good. It's I really like good. You can you can tell that like there's something weird going on, and I won't spoil it, but it's very good. Yeah, I like good that stuff. part a lot. Yeah, I really really like this movie. I think I would probably like. I don't know why I'm so reserved. But I don't know why I'm so reserved. I really, really like this movie. And I don't know if it's just because um, 
I don't know why I feel like I I think it's you can say it's because Anne Hathaway's hot. She is very pretty. She's very very pretty in this <laughs> that's, movie. That's her big said, eyes oh, and that blonde hair. No, no. It's like and she's smoking and she's so <laughs> <Hell> cool. <yeah. laughs> um, but yeah, this movie's great. I want to watch it again. Uh, I don't know why this is also like one I think they can maybe maybe gonna get a little like lost. I don't know because it just it's not gonna get nominated for anything. It came out during that time, but this yeah. movie's great. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, I think it's great. Would I gain anything if I read the book? It's like it's essentially oh. is it like pretty straight ad- adaptation of that yeah, book? Yeah, I'd say so. You might enjoy getting a little more hindsight into uh, Eileen's character just from her point of view, from watching everything. But okay, if if you're curious, it's a quick read. It was only like two hundred and sixty pages. Okay, I think, so cool. you can fly through it. Yep, and also this movie is also pretty short. Like, there's not that many stuff that happens in it, but it's pretty good. Oh. Chocolate, of course. Yep. <laughs> Wonka, baby! <laughs> Wonderful confection, or whatever the fuck. Uh, uh, a Paul King confection. A Paul King confection. <laughs> uh, Wonka, starring Timothy Chalamet. Uh, Cal Lane, is that the little girl? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've seen her in anything other than this. Yeah, I don't think so. Is she on uh, Riverdale? Oh, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> Uh, Hugh Grant, Olivia Colman, uh, Keegan Michael Kay, and Sally Hawkins for a bit. I wish there was more. And Rowan Atkinson. Who's Rowan Atkinson? He was the priest. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, this is a musical. I'm gonna say adaptation of Wonka. It's sort of a prequel, I guess. I don't fucking know. You get to see how Willie Wonka. became Wonka. Not an adaptation <laughs> that of Roll Dolls. Not an adaptation of Roll Dolls. How George became Cruz Alvarez. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I don't know. There was a the first the reaction the roller coaster I went on this uh, my personal ad- <laughs> uh, anticipation of this film was that first trailer and being like, what the fuck is this <laughs> this is insane this can't possibly that's be. how i felt when i read like the press thing of like warner brothers studios making a walk up prequel starring timothy chalamet it's like huh that's like <laughs> fake youtube thumbnail shit yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um and then i sat with it a little bit more and then i rewatched Willy wonka the child i was like well i guess this one's a musical it's not that far off uh and then I was like, okay, maybe it'll, you know, okay. And then I watched it. I was like, that's pretty good. Hey, like, after the reviews came out, after the reviews, like, it's good. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. You're lying. <laughs> it's, it's all right. Um, yeah, I don't know, Carrie. You, you, you're a fan of musicals. You're a fan of Paddington Bear. I love Paddington. Holy shit. <laughs> Apparently, that guy at the toll booth is a guy or. He's he appeared, he's appeared he, in all the Paddington <laughs> movies. Uh, he was a recurring character in both Paddington movies where he's the security guard who keeps thinking that whenever there's, in both movies, there's a part where one of the older male characters has to disguise themselves as a woman and this guy is always a security guard who thinks that that woman's really hot. It's a good <laughs> bit. It's fucking hilarious. That's how you build up on a joke. No, that's my, my favorite part of Paddington too is when uh, Hugh Grant again is uh, dressed up as a nun trying to get the letter off the ceiling and he's the security guard. He's like, oi! <laughs> Across the way. <laughs> it kills me. You shouldn't have brought up Paddington too because that was the, that's the best thing I've ever seen and Wonka's just pretty good. But <laughs> <laughs> Sally Hawkins a lot more in Paddington also. True, very true. Yeah, she's fantastic. So yeah, what did you think of it? Uh, I liked Wonka a lot. My journey with Wonka was that when the trailer first came out, I was like, whoa, <laughs> let's go. This looks insane. And then the review, I was hoping for like bombastically terrible and weird. And then the reviews came out, and I was like, oh, it might just be good. And then I watched it, and I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I uh, The original is one of my favorite movies, and it obviously didn't live up to that at that same level. Mm. But I think it's an uh, extremely uh, nice movie. It's yeah. genuine. But, yeah, I think this movie was good. Uh, I think Timothy was great. And He's really good. The part where they milked a giraffe was out of pocket and insane. But... <laughs> <laughs> But I, I forgot about it. that. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a great movie. I had a fun time. Yeah, Ryan, I I liked it this more than I wish I did. <laughs> um, 
And I think I think the reason for it is, you know, if you take this movie and you replace Willy Wonka with Paddington Bear, mm-hmm. like that would be the best movie. Paddington's I've a ever chocolate seen maker. Well, life. like, like for the most part, that movie, the movie would work almost exactly the same because you could so you could see Paddington not read a manuscript yeah. or whatever and Contract, get yeah. and get and get trapped in a weird hotel, oh, no. and then he has to work his way out. Oh. You know, he went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> like you could see that happening yeah. to him and him be and him beat in all the situations and that's how it works and this is basically just a Paddington movie um and that's what i liked about it and the humor especially from the supporting cast felt like supporting casts from a Paddington movie and that's probably just because that's how paul king writes these more family friendly you know comedies that's that's just his style but still very good um yeah, none of the songs did much of anything for me. Um, and I don't know. I felt like at one point they were trying to do like a romance thing between Wonka and like the girl. Did anyone just feel this? I, I, well, I mean, like, I could see that being a romantic scene, but then I was like, wait, she's 12. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because like he's singing songs to her and like it feels like a bonding moment. It's like, how old is she? And how, because I remember like, Wait, how old is she and how old is he? Because that changes, like, what this is. Yeah. And I didn't like that. I feel like Timothy Chalamet did a good job of depicting Willy Wonka as a sexless being. Yeah, which that is I, true. Yeah. That's real, I that is that. true. I yeah. that. <laughs> this man doesn't fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do like also the idea of... <laughs> This is the beginning of his career when he's like young and hopeful. And then you watch yeah. the original and he's just like, Getting I want to cynical. Yeah. I hate them. They stole my damn recipes. <laughs> you get nothing. Good day. Yeah. Very funny to think about that. <laughs> that progression. Does this, does the Timothy Chalamet Wonka grow up to be the original or the awful terrified uh, Johnny Depp one. So that's the biggest thing. Has anyone kept the box office for this? I didn't look it up because I don't know, I don't know if this is going to, because I think like, Charlie Chalamet Factor de facto became a generation's Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this will become that. Uh, I know it's done. I know this has been the Christmas movie because mm-hmm. like I, I hypothesized on that and There's then I nothing was correct. Else, yeah. Because like no one was going to see Aquaman 2, obviously. <laughs> So people are just like, I guess we'll see Wonka. Four hundred million, so it did okay. It made its money back, I bet. Maybe, but it's not. A, I don't think it was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory numbers. Let me look. In my head, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, because I was hyped out of my mind to watch that movie when I was a little kid. So Same. I assumed everyone else in the world was excited. <laughs> I'm assuming that made fourteen billion dollars. I mean, Four hundred seventy-five fa- million USD. Pretty good. Pretty it did pretty good. Me and my family <laughs> see it twice. <laughs> yeah. So it did better than. Yeah, Charlie did better than Wonka. So Wonka's not a slam dunk. I don't know if it'll become a Generations. Uh, Willy Wonka, like, entry point. I think it might just be Charlie or Willy Wonka. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I thought this was fine. Like I said, I think this is the most impressive thing I've seen Timothy Chalamet in. I haven't seen Bones and all. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's very he's very melodramatic classic. Timothy Chalamet in it, though. So if you don't like that, you wouldn't really like that performance. But that movie's Awesome. Yeah, I I saw like a few people saw the Timothy Chalamet singing it was embarrassing. He was good. He was fine. He was yeah, pretty good. Yeah, he was people totally people fine. just hate musicals. And yeah, things. I think so too. I was like, that was fine. I was I I think uh, the biggest thing I came out like sincere. I this felt I, I believed his character was genuinely this like hopeful and yeah, like it didn't nice. feel like he was forcing it. Like the songs felt like they felt the character, and I was like, yes, yeah, it's fine. You should play more characters who are happy. <laughs> Maybe. No. Not just like not with that bone structure. And, oh, that's true. <laughs> and not just like there's sand everywhere. Maybe a game. Silence! Or <laughs> that trailer. Uh, I am Paul Atreides. Uh Ben and Jesse. I've been fighting them for a decade. I've been fighting them for five hundred years. We're all gonna have we're all gonna have to rewatch Dune, right? Because none of us remember what the I don't remember a single thing to do. (laughs) Ben and Jezra, can I remember that? I need I need to rewatch that movie like hours before we watch Dune (laughs) 2, just so I can really little time between I cannot forget anything. (laughs) Ideally they do a double feature, like, oh thank god. I can just I can just enjoy (laughs) it. I'm going to need two beers and a cheeseburger for this bad boy. We all got to order two beers so we can go see Dune 2. But yeah, I thought this movie was 
completely good. Yeah. We're totally fine. So good job, Timothy. Good job, Paul. Keep Paul, at it. I guess I understand you're gonna make another Paddington movie. I don't know if he's I think to he's a uh, Paddington movie. So uh, that is I think he might just be a, a producer, producer at right. most, but he's not directing it, yeah. which I'm worried. Yeah. Concerned. I but love the, I love my boy and also we do have to remember the factoid that we saw that Olivia Coleman joined the cast as a lady who runs a retirement home for bears. So you know what, maybe actually it'll be a great You know what, Carrie, that's a good point and I wanna be help, hopeful, but like the the dream was this would be the de facto best trilogy in cinema history and we were so and we're so, we're close. so damn close. It could happen. It, it could, could still happen, insane. but like the problem, like if Paul could get back to, to direct, it would have been it would have been a no it's, doubt. This yeah, is the it's best. not a surefire thing anymore. <laughs> yeah, we it, gotta we gotta fight. We for gotta it. we gotta believe. Retirement home for bears. That is hilarious. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> oh boy. Well, <clears throat> Ferrari, folks. Michael Mann's Ferrari, starring Adam Driver, Penelope Cruz, and Shailene Woodley. Um, this movie. Uh, chronicles a very specific uh, moment in time in Enzo Ferrari's life post World War II, where uh, TV is not that big of a thing. Well, TV televised races is not really a thing. So Ferrari is a name, but it's kind of a name in Italy, and people who like rich kings and shit who like went to Italy is like, oh, this is the most expensive car we got in Italy. It's like, well, I'll buy it. <laughs> so it, Ferrari's not like you. Everyone knows Ferrari. Like you don't have to know about cars to know that's a expensive brand um and so uh enzo is on the ropes you know uh yeah i have to hold all the cards but that's the cards on my hand as penelope cruz says and he has to hold all the cards he has to make a move um uh, you're out the money how uh yeah so yes yeah, so he is at a point uh the, there's a big race happening and the thing is going to be televised and so what they want to do is like okay Let's maybe sell it. Let's maybe find an American partner. Except he doesn't. He, he just weasels away to get Italy to pay for, pay for him uh, to keep staying in business. And let's win this race so we get a bunch of publicity. And so then we can sell more. We can make more cars and sell more cars because now people, more people know what Ferrari is. So it's a long shot. It's kind of like Ford versus Ferrari, but the other way where Ford was like, ah, oh, you know. <laughs> um, and so yes, but of course nobody cares about that. People care about. Uh, Fucking uh, Adam Driver being an Italian man and uh, Penelope Cruz being his wife who hates him and shoots him <laughs> in the uh, to wake up to be like good morning husband uh, as the fiery Penelope Cruz does. Um, so yeah, this movie everything and everything in the trailer that got me excited about this movie, this movie delivered. Nice. Adam Driver being Italian is all fucking hell, <laughs> waxing poetic about how our our terrible passion. Our beautiful joy. All of us are races. Uh, two objects in motion cannot be in mo cannot be in motion at the same. Two objects cannot exist in, at in the, the same, same time. Point. Yeah. <laughs> at the same point in time. Am I a sportsman or am I a competitor? Um, <laughs> so yeah. Italian. Yeah. So that that this movie is uh yeah it delivers uh on it is a good movie about a very wildly charismatic Italian man with a lot of power. Who is fine having his drivers die in order to uh, the legacy of Ferrari uh, and what it means to be a race car? When he says like, "Am I a, am I a sportsman or am I a competitor?" You get in my cars, you get into winning. Meaning that when someone when when those two objects being like a car is here, a car is here, you're gonna cut that guy off. He's gonna fucking die or you die, but like so you can't let him go. Essentially, it's like you can't make it let him pass you and like. Oh, I don't want to die or kill him. Like he can go, whatever. Like no, 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 no. You get in my car, you get in to win. So that is what this is about. And uh, Penelope Cruz finding out that he's cheating with Shailene Woodley, which is crazy yeah, to that's, me. That's... I do not understand that at all. Not a, not a big Shailene Woodley fan over there. Yeah. Like the uh, and Penelope Cruz finds out that he has an affair, and he has a kid. He has had a son for years, oh. like twelve years. Uh, and her, the son they had died of uh, oh I forgot what disease, but he but he died, uh, and since since the the their kid died, it's been awful. And Penelope Cruz has been a mess, uh, and so now we had a moment where like okay now the company's gonna go under, 
Black Clover Cruise, who, like, as we said in the trailer, half the cards are in my hand. She owns half the company. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what the boiling pot here is in the movie. Um, and, yeah, that's great. If you if everything I said, like, you want to see Adam Dreyer be passionate about cars and about how he needs to win and about he loves his son, um, this movie's for you. Driving, I don't like, I think the car scenes are okay. Uh, there's a use some CGI in this movie, and I don't think it looks very good. In fact, if you watch that first trailer, and if you look, if you actually pay attention to that car, the crash it looks car that awful. The, yeah. It looks horrible. <laughs> uh, it looks better in the movie, but yeah, I think I don't. I think if you're a car guy, if you like Ferrari specifically, <laughs> maybe you'll get something out of this movie. But I mostly Michael Mann. I, someone on Letterboxd said. Uh, I don't mean to shock you guys, but Michael Mann made another movie about the terrible weight about being a man. Uh, and that's what this movie is. That's what this movie is. It's like legacy. I got to have a son. Mm -hmm. the, the, the legacy I've made before. Uh, I love having sex with women. Wow, so <laughs> uh, my man. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I think this movie is great. I don't know if it's going to... I'd, I'd laugh. If uh, if we got a lot of noms, <laughs> mainly because it just feels like so old Oscars. Like in a world where it was mainly men who controlled this industry, they would have been like, they'd be like, hell yeah, bro. That's fucking right. <laughs> that's fucking right. Uh, but I don't think I don't I don't know if that's gonna fly. I think the soundtrack's beautiful. I love the soundtrack. Same composer did the Spider Verse soundtrack. Um, oh. And Penelope Cruz, a lot of and again, people be like, Penelope Cruz eats in this movie. It's like. Dude, she has like a few lines in this movie and she's just great because she's Penelope Cruz. <laughs> she's just in this movie and she says something, she yells really loudly with a Spanish accent and it's great. She shoots a gun. It's, I get it, but she's not, she's not pushing her range here. Um, but Ferrari, I don't know. Check it out with you and your dad maybe. I don't know. Um, your dad has already bought the ticket. I'm assuming, does anybody here have any interest in Ferrari? Other than Adam was, Driver being Italian. Like, yeah, like, like, oh, kinda... another movie where Adam Driver plays an Italian man where he has really rough sex. Uh, really oh, aggressive sex. Hell, That's now it. I'm Sorry. <laughs> if this gets nominated for Best Picture... That'd be wild. <laughs> it'd be wild, but then I'll, then I'll watch it. Yeah, I mean, that's why I watched... Ford v Ferrari. Yeah, because I... That movie was okay. Yeah, it was pretty good. That's a better movie, I think, than this. Mm. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Uh, less funny, but uh, right. but it is a better movie. <laughs> better car movie, also. I see. Right. Huh? It's got two kinds of cars in it. That's mm -hmm. uh, loud. Yeah. Well, I'm going to check the box office, because, uh, again, this seemed like a, a big swing for Neon. This felt like some Parasite money. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know... It came out on... I, I truly don't know how, I, I think there are way too many, there's too many genre specific type of movies on Christmas. There wasn't a big, other than Wonka, there wasn't like too big. Some that anyone could Yeah, watch. it's a lot of like pockets and I'm like, I, are, are we making enough money? Everyone got Color Purple, are you making enough money? Money, uh, Ferrari, are you making enough money? Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. So let me look at here. Ferrari made, yeah, $20 million. So not that much, but I, I doubt the budget was that high. I don't think they didn't blow up an actual car, I don't think. So, <laughs> you know. All right. Speaking of uh, movies for about boys in the, for the boys. For the boys. Um, the Iron Claw. Uh, starring Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White. And I don't know anybody else in this movie. Harris uh, Dickinson. He was from, Harris Dickinson was the guy from Triangle of Sadness. Oh, you're right. <laughs> That's the main guy. That is him. Mm -hmm. Huh. His haircut really fucking <laughs> threw me off. <laughs> He's in disguise. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, and Lily James in this as yes. a very Lily James character. Yeah. Um, yeah. I could tell from like the physical. Yep. You're uh -huh. just doing Baby Driver. Yeah, you're, just <laughs> doing cool. you're like you're you're uh, you know you like this guy who's just he's just, he's just there's something in him he's just special. <laughs> you're here to support his dream, you know. Um, so yeah, Iron Claw is a movie based on the life and times of the Von Erichs, who are uh, old old timey legacy wrestling. A family back when the, the things were just territory. There wasn't a WWE that was like, this is the wrestling company. There's just a bunch of pockets of different wrestling companies across the United States. And Von Eric's um, father owned uh, one of them. I forget where, but yeah. Uh, Carrie, you saw this movie. Ryan, did. you didn't see this, right? No. Nope. Carrie, you're a not wrestling person. Right. I, uh, 
I I do live with Greg, who is a big wrestling person. So he's shown me some wrestling stuff, and we've watched a couple wrestling documentaries just about like Andre the Giant and some stuff like that. But have you seen this one, this documentary? No, I okay, not. okay. I, so I knew nothing about okay, okay, what, okay. Uh, what was in store for me going into this movie. I had never heard of them before, but but yeah. Uh, this movie was uh, devastating, mm -hmm. but uh, also really, really good, which makes it hard to recommend. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, basically, you can imagine it's just this dad who was a wrestler, mm -hmm. and uh, he wants to instill his fucking uh, big timey I'm a wrestler attitude into his sons' mm -hmm. dreams that he never was able to accomplish. And, yes, and. Uh, the results are mixed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not too far from the wrestler, as in that wrestling is a is a hard gig, brother. Uh, <laughs> it's hard, especially back in the day. It's a mm -hmm. hard life. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, I like this a lot. Um, I think uh, I think Zach Efron really is the star of this movie oh, for me. Yeah. He is He's amazing. He, I really, I don't know if he'll get another chance to get a role. That he can actually sink his teeth into. And someone will actually take him seriously. Because yeah. um, even when the photos came out of this movie, people were like, what the fuck is that from, dude? <laughs> and to be fair, he does like, he had no context. It does look ridiculous. It looks, it looks wild, but um, it, it makes sense. But also, I will tell you what. Like, <laughs> I've never been super attracted to big, muscly men. I kind of get, I kind of got it. <laughs> it's like, this guy, he's, he's pretty good. Anyways, but, but um... But yeah, he delivers a character who's just like, man, I fucking love my family. I yeah. fucking love my brothers. I really do. Um, and he just really care. And um, it just really comes through and it feels sincere. And uh, he absolutely, like, he embodies that of a person who, like, just loves his family, just hanging out with his family. And so, like, what happens in the movie? It's this history. I mean, I think, no, I don't want to spoil it. People don't know this person's history, but whatever. Um, it's, it's tragedy happens. Um, and it's, it, it's really heartbreaking. To him, to him feel like, man, what is... Again, like, there's this thing of... Like, they don't push it in the marketing or whatever, but, like, there is this Von Eric curse, like, that this follows his family. And the fact where he just starts believing, like, oh, like, this is fucking real. Like, and to be fair, I, I would think I the believe same thing. Too. I, I believe think it the too. same thing. Like, how does this happen? Like, how does <laughs> yeah. such horrible things happen in ink succession? Um, but, yeah, I don't think you need to like wrestling to like this movie. There's not a lot of wrestling in the movie. <laughs> Um, I think you just, if you were looking for like a sad story, but like a also touching story, I think this is a, this is good. I think my, I, I mentioned this in my letterbox review that in my knee jerk reaction was that the ending felt a little heavy handed for me at first because it's it's very like I don't even know like it, it, it's on the nose. Uh, but then I remember that like uh, like he's, the, the main part like Zach Efron's character in this movie is still alive. Like he's still alive. Like this is still his life that mm -hmm. happened. Um, so having a moment to have something that maybe feel sappy, uh, I think is completely fine. Yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty good movie. Do you have any interest in watching this, Ryan? Uh, if it gets nominated okay. for big awards, <laughs> then I will. But it might. I just I just like sports movies do so little for me. Just because like. Fair. That part of my brain is not there to be interested in that. So, like, it has to be, like, an award-winning or have, like, an actor that I'm, like, really down for, like, uh, Margot Robbie and Itania. Um, but also that story is very interesting. Yeah. I kind of knew a little bit about it beforehand. Been too long since I've seen that. that again. I need to rewatch that again, too. But, yeah. I I'm not opposed. I'm not, like, no not for me, bub. But it's just one of those, like, yeah. Maybe. I'm the same way about sports movies, but I will say that this connects a lot more emotionally than like an emotional basketball movie oh, or sure. like an emotional football movie because it's just like you get to see the characters existing in the moment in such intimate fights and also just it's a lot more of their interpersonal relationships and it's just it's a lot, but it's really really good. I liked it. Mm -hmm. They don't. They're not doing this to save a rec center somewhere. No. Absolutely. Okay. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, 
I again, I strongly recommend watching the documentary. Yeah, I, I, I think I'll check it out. Well, the I'm I'm as a triple A twenty four member, I can subscribe to their zine, and the zine that's coming out is a Von Eric zine. Yeah. So I'll be reading that. <laughs> I think that, and there is a wrestler in the beginning of the movie called Bruiser Brody. He also has a fucking wild, fascinating uh, story. I think that's another one that you could make a movie out of that, and it'd be great. Um, but yeah, and those are two stories also, the Von Erichs and Bruiser Brody. Those are stories that are so of old wrestling that no one knew. So like when they did those documentaries on Dark Side of the Ring, which is what the series is called, I was just, just like, I had no idea, and this is wild, why isn't this story? Oh, it's because it's not WWE. <laughs> and they're also not yeah. positive stories, so yeah, yeah. that's why they're not sure, shared. Um, but yeah, Dark Side of the Ring, check it out, and, the, and that movie. You did watch Rebel Moon Part I did, 1, I A did, Child of Fire, though. I did right? watch that Rebel is something Moon. you spent <laughs> the two hours and 30-ish minutes of the time you had on this I, I, want, I just want to emphasize, <laughs> I watched the intro of it, I got tired, and I picked it back up the next day. Um, okay. <laughs> so you had it out. <laughs> and you, and you got it. Yeah. I couldn't. I could have just left it at that, and I was like, no, no, no. I, I got to do it for my boys. Uh, my boys. My boy was cooking, and I gotta let him finish. Um, but yes, this is uh, this is Rebel Moon Part One, A Child of Fire, a Zack Snyder film. Um, Sophia it was Batella. Yeah. It it was originally pitched as a Star Wars spinoff. When Disney bought LucasArts, he came to them and he pitched them an idea, which was basically um, Seven Samurai, but on Star Wars. Um, and they're like, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> but but he liked the idea and he kept the script um, and he just basically reworked the script to his own thing for Netflix. And it is not very good. Um, I would say it's Probably, I Sucker Punch is his worst I was movie. Gonna ask you Sucker Punch is his worst Sucker movie, Punch. but this is this is next to Sucker Punch. This is absolutely dreadful. But Sucker Punch is fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. True. This movie is not fascinating. okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> it is very boring. <laughs> and I've even seen so like the the story is it's 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 basically Star Wars where you have this moon where it has. <laughs> You have this moon, and there's this colony of people on this moon. I know Star Wars. <laughs> there's this colony of people on this moon, and then the evil empire comes by. It's like, hey, we want your crops, and we're also gonna kill and rape a bunch of you. And they're like, mm -hmm. we don't like that, uh, but okay. And then this one girl who used to be a member of the empire uh, decides to Is that go. Sophia Batella? That's Sophia Batella. Is she a rebel? She, yeah, and it's her moon. Um, and she goes off on a venture to find, to like basically search for warriors to like join the fight against the the, the empire, basically. Um, and it's bad. It's bad for a number of reasons. And it's also just fascinating as like what is trying to be a Star Wars movie because it, it begins with they're celebrating like a crop harvest festival which means that they're all going to have sex after this big party. And that's just a weird way to start a movie. Like everyone's going to fuck. Um, I'm sure Kathleen Kennedy would have notes about that. Yeah, she'd have some notes about that. And then, and then what's also fascinating as a Star Wars movie is there are two sexual assaults in this film. There's a part where after the Empire comes down... Uh, and they're and they're basically you know controlling uh, the the farm area. They like find a girl and like hey let's all do a, a big crime. And then like the boss comes in and it's like hey 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 leaps up for me boys. And it's like okay cool. And Sophia Batella has been watch she watches it for a while. Then and then very late decides to step in and she's like <laughs> you came you you rushed as a she, you didn't rush in you watched for a while and waited till they were just about to do that even though they were really talking it up um and there's also part where they basically you know in original star wars where luke and <laughs> they're at that oh, weird bar uh, yes and the guy's like blah blah blah, blah. Like, cantina yes yeah and he's like <laughs> he doesn't like you i don't like you either yeah. it's like one of those things mm -hmm. except a weird weird gross monster grabs a guy by the dick and is like how much for your toy <laughs> um and it's fucking awful it sounds like a Zack um, Snyder movie yep but yeah that's just fascinating there's two things like that in a P this movie's PG-13 and there are two sexual assaults in it that 
How is that possible? I, <laughs> I don't understand. Like, I genuinely don't know how that's possible. But what's also weird is is that there's already being talked about a Snyder cut of this. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Because basically Netflix wanted a PG-13 cut, and he's like, I want it rated R. I'm like, okay, how about you do both? And and all, like, the Snyder... And, like, I've read stuff from, like, fans who like this. Because I was like, what are people who are saying they like this about? And the consensus of people who like this are basically... Like, this is such a big buildup for, like, what will be the correct version. I saw one, like, long review. It was like, this is basically an hour and a half long trailer for what will be the greatest movie of all time. It's like, what are you do? What are you saying? <laughs> what are you... Oh. But the gist, it's, it's they just go planet hopping. They find, like, a weird person who has a certain set of skills. Like, we need you to join the team. Like, I don't want to join your team. Like, what if we do this quick thing? Like, I ride this weird hawk horse and it's like if you can fly that hawk horse then you can you can get out of here it's like what if i fight this weird spider monster who's for some reason played by jenna malone and it's like it's like okay. oh that's that's weird <laughs> and that scene goes on for a while and then like because it's a part one it just kind of ends mm -hmm. like they get they get the team together they 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 run into the bad guy. Half of the team dies, which is fascinating, including Ray Fisher, which is weird because like he's the one who's like like vocally backed Zack Snyder the most. Right. And then like he's in this movie and then Zack Snyder kills him off in the first one. Maybe he'll come back as a robot. Or <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's just weird, but then they do a big fight. They they think they kill the big bad guy, um, but then like they the villains just bring him back to life with magic robot thing. And then it's like, and he's like, I'm coming back in the next movie, which is also <laughs> this movie because it's half of a movie. But yeah, it's mostly just boring and like there's so much slow mo too. Like I know it's a Zack Snyder thing, but like there's a lot of slow mo, but it doesn't. The action <laughs> scenes have no like they don't feel inspired. Like, at least with, like, if you watch, like, Zack Snyder's Justice League, it, you can be like, oh, that's a shot from this thing. This is a thing from this thing. And you can see where all the ideas come from. It's like, this is clearly Star Wars, but it doesn't feel inspired by anything. And none of the sets feel interesting. It just feels like Star Wars, but with rape. I don't know what it is. It's so weird. I don't know what it is. It's a weird movie. And it's... It's... And I don't know. And it's going to be forgotten about. Too. Now, here's my question, Ryan. Yes. There is no way you didn't know that the Zack Snyder cut was coming. You knew that, right? Yes. So are you going to rewatch this movie again now to watch this, the cut? Pro I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do. Probably not. Because like, then it's boring. And then I just will see... A and like I know one of the scenes that got cut because after because when like there's the fucking festival or whatever, yes. Um, it like it cuts to like the next day and it's like I saw you sneaking out and went to Blue Badoo's cabin. She's like I'll never tell. And like you know that like a sexy there's just a, th that all that is is just like oh she goes out and there's probably a twenty minute t scene where she gets railed like really hard and, and then it gets and then the camera pans to Zack Snyder and the core just rubbing his hands together like oh yeah the thing is it doesn't sound it like a Zack Snyder movie other than the slow-mo but like he doesn't make horrible movies they're just not they're just like dude movies this sounds awful no it's it's a bad movie like it's boring like Batman or Superman's not good but it's kind of grown on me it's kind of grown it's okay it's okay you can you can point out things that happened in that movie you can't point yeah. out a thing happening in the movie okay. other than like this character showed up and then they're on the team, but then after they're on the team, they don't do anything. Like they're just on, they're just in the background of shots. And like, what's weird is like the, the biggest one, like one of the first ones they get up is a guy who just looks like um, uh, Tarzan. Like he never wears a shirt and he has like super long hair and he like I guess he's and he was a slave or something and like okay and he just looks like Tarzan. And he rides the big hawk horse, and it's like, like you're a powerhouse. Join the team, and then he is just in the background, <laughs> even though he's like the muscle or something. And like, if you're gonna have all these characters, and you're given the room to like make a two part film that's like four hours, how come we don't even have time to like flesh them out? And then also, there's sorry, I don't want to get too much into this, but like. Too late. So much of, like, the story 
of like knowing the background of these characters is just straight up like they're sitting on a campfire is like I had a hard life. Let me tell you about it. And then just a long cut scene of them narrating. like, and that's why I left the bad team. And it's like, cool. <laughs> you could have done this any other way than us just sitting down and talking about it. Like, I don't know. It's so fascinating and weird and like lazy. And I don't understand it. And it's also not a finished film. It's not a finished film in like two ways. Like it's part one. And it's not what, and it's not a finished it's not full part cut, one. Yeah, it's so fast. It's so weird, and everyone's gonna forget about it. So, it's the also, idea here is Netflix won a PG thirteen movie, so it could. <laughs> it's on Netflix. Yeah, like it's not a theatrical movie. Like every, like it's on everyone's yeah, stream. What, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> what are you talking about? And then my, and then my last thing is the. The two subtitles, the Ch a child of fire, and part two is called the Scar Giver. Those are both nicknames for um, Sophia Botola's character. Okay, and that's weird, cause like it's like it's like Star Wars Part One, Luke Skywalker. Oh. Star Wars Part Two, also Luke Skywalker. <laughs> It's just, it's just a, it's just a weird thing. You get thing. to see how the child of fire becomes the scar giver. No, because in the movie, she's the scar giver. They call oh. her the scar giver. And then she's like, in the, in a past life, I was what one would call a child of fire. And it's like, oh, that's a weird way to put it. Oh. So it's just weird. There's just, there's just, a, just a lot of weird stuff. In are the movie. two parts supposed to be like one big movie or are yeah they, oh so that would make sense they're both the same movie <laughs> it's real, just weird real this quick listeners yeah. as we usually do this podcast we watch a bunch of shit on a television or we're recording <laughs> <laughs> uh, and i okay this is wall street i thought this was eagle eye and carrie mulligan and and uh Shia LaBeouf were in this? But no, it's just Carrie Mulligan and Shia LaBeouf in Wall Street 2 that came out. No one remembers this was a movie that came out. Uh, Anyways. It's weird no. seeing Shia Carrie LaBeouf Mulligan. in this era. It's weird seeing... <laughs> Carrie Mulligan, too, yeah. Carrie Mulligan making out Shia LaBeouf. Was... That's weird, yeah. Yikes. That was weird. But like... <laughs> it's like weird because like Shia LaBeouf is like so smooth baby face. Yeah, like that's... Nowadays, the... he's like, you know, a gruff homeless man. <laughs> no, he's was... a priest now. Whatever. <laughs> But like, there was no transitional period. Like he just be he just jumped to like he this next. He cannot divide thing. us. He cannot divide us. That's the thing. Are you not familiar with this? No. Oh, uh, after Donald Trump got elected, oh, he no. started a live stream in the middle of New York with a camera and a television where he was live streaming. He was just saying he cannot divide us. He cannot divide us. And like. It was just never, and so he just had people coming up from the street just talking. Uh, but he oh. wasn't saying anything meaningful. <laughs> and he cannot divide us. I oh, see. I remember this. Yeah. And then he was like, that. that woman's a liar. I did not do those things. Yeah, so wasn't he accused of stuff? I don't I feel know. Like, I don't know. Yeah, okay, cool. I actually don't know. Uh, don't worry. Uh, he's <clears throat> with me as off now. Well, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you need help, we are here for you. <laughs> Anyway, our podcast studio always has a bed for you. <laughs> Rebel Moon. That's the most I've known. Like I, I have not. No nothing, one's. No one's. That's talking the thing about I'm it. saying. Is like, why would Netflix do this? We know Zack Snyder's Justice League did not make. Like it didn't work. Like money. Like again, money. Like look at the dollars. Sentiment. I don't give a fuck about sentiment. Money is what I care about. Why did you do this? <laughs> It's also like they want to get the Snyder fans because they're like, oh, this is such a big fan base. But they don't give a shit about anything unless he makes more Justice League stuff. They don't. They don't care about anything else he makes except just for Justice let League. Him do Excalibur already. What? Just let him do Excalibur already. That's what he all wants to do, you know? Uh, he loves yeah. Excalibur. Anyways, let's talk about a good director and a good film. Actually, this is the movie of this director I like the most, so I don't even know. Actually, no, I like the favorite. Anyways, poor things. Um, Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, Rami Youssef, Willem Dafoe, uh, Jared Carmichael? Yeah. Um, the new movie from Yorgos Lanthimos. Kara, you're a big Yorg head. <laughs> I am a Yorg, I am a Yorg, Yorg head tonight. <laughs> um, I guess, actually, before we start, I guess, was there, you mentioned that, uh, 
Yorg and Emma were going to make a, the book adaptation from the author of uh, Eileen. Mm-hmm. Um, has there been a sort of a journey to this movie at all? Or is it just like he's been cooking secretly? Like, here it is. This is what we're doing. Uh, I don't know. Well, because I mean, I know this movie's also based on a book. Oh, right. Yes, that's true. But so maybe he just was like. <laughs> Different was, book, Emma. He was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Return that book to the library. Check this one out. <laughs> Uh, but I mean that other book I didn't like very much. That's her most popular book, The oh, Year of Rest and Relaxation. Okay. I did not like that book. That book was kind of fucking stupid. Okay. But, uh, I was curious to see what he would do with it, but I've not read the Poor Things book. Gotcha. Okay. Well, anyways, Poor Things, obviously, highly anticipated. Incredible trailer. Incredible posters. Mm-hmm. Incredible marketing all around. Carrie, what'd you think of this? Uh, I liked it a lot. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it connected with me as much as his other movies. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. But uh, I still really enjoyed it. But uh, heartbreakingly enough, I feel like this might be a really good and I respect it, but I don't know if I care mm-hmm. movie. And uh, that sucks. I'm so sad. We were looking for a four and a half or five stars. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Well, I, and I'm only being super critical of it because I love his other movies so right. much. I haven't had less than a stellar reaction to any of his movies. So I just don't know if I was expecting something else, but I, I don't want to make it sound like I, I gave this movie four stars. I still really, really like it, but it did not hit as hard as I wanted it mm-hmm. to, but it's still fantastic. Undeniably. Mm-hmm. Uh, plot. If you don't know what poor things is for whatever reason, uh, mm-hmm. Willem Dafoe is his doctor, I guess a surgeon. Sort of a really smart, really head of his field. Um, but his dad himself uh, practiced surgeries on his body. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he, you know, looks a little, a little rough. A little, different. a little A little different. And everybody's like, look at this freak. And then Rami's all like, ah, he's cool though. And then Mom's like, come work for me, buddy. Come on. I got a, I got a job for you uh, to come to my house and chronicle something. And then he's all like, I brought a lady back to life. Although she doesn't, she's got the ch- the brain of a baby. And she's got to learn everything. This is the last time we'll bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, she needs to know, she needs to figure out the world and you need to chronicle it. Uh, and then she starts, you know, growing, her brain starts doing stuff. It's like, ah, I'm, a, I, I'm starting to have desires and wants <laughs> and, uh, you know, thoughts of my own. I'm not a... Uh, a fucking little robot or a Frankenstein thing or Frankenstein's monster. You can just, whatever. Well, Frankenstein's monster also had. Bad Ellie, he also had thoughts. <laughs> anyway. We're, we're at the part of Frankenstein where he sits in the cabin and learns how to talk. Ex- yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. And then uh, Emma Stone go, goes off on an adventure with uh, fucking Mark Ruffalo who's the lawyer but he shows up and then disappears. <laughs> the lawyer who's gonna make an ironclad wedding like some, like an ironclad agreement so that Emma Stone can't and Rami can't leave or something like that? I don't remember what he was there to do. <laughs> but they were there to do like a set. It was essentially like a bill of sale. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. And then uh, she goes with uh, Mark Ruffalo on an adventure of discovery. <laughs> Planning to come back. Yes. <laughs> she just wants and to then an marry adventure. him. <laughs> yeah. The first, I got to go see what's going on over there. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Ryan, you, you are okay on this movie. Yeah, it's fine. It it really didn't connect with me. My my joke review, which is a little serious, was just like there's just about eighteen too many scenes of like just fucking for for my personal taste. There's a lot of sex. If it's a big thing, with this it's lady. a big thing with this movie and this lady. So I really recommend you do not watch with your parents. <laughs> like I love that Emma Stone is like yeah. Did you watch uh, it with your parents? No. Okay. I it with Carrie, but like I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, do not. <laughs> but yeah, it just didn't connect with me as much. But I feel that way about a lot of the Orgos movies. Where like, I like so much of like what they. I like a lot of like little things, but like the way they're tied together just does not connect with me. Like I feel like I should really like the lobster, because like it's you should so, like the lobster. I know, no, I know, because and it's also just like very similar, like tonally and. With its ideas for like a lot of stuff I really like, but there's just something about them. It's like, it just doesn't like hit home with me. And maybe it's like all the like aggressive sexual stuff that just doesn't maybe. connect with me personally. And this movie has a lot of that. <laughs> and like, I like, I like, and I do appreciate like what this one does with that more like 
ideally because it's more about you know liberation and doing like what she wants to do and not you know being controlled and being free to do her own thing i like that a lot it just is not the movie for ryan it's very funny though um willem dafoe is hilarious i like margaret qualley coming back at the last oh, minute yeah. as, <laughs> as, like, as like the as weird like, okay as the weird like failed replacement, failed replacement <laughs> who, like what was the weird thing she was just like repeating like a bunch of times i thought that was very funny oh fuck i don't remember i can't yeah. remember yeah but, and i just like how there's like trying to like throw a ball with her and she, they just hit her on the head mm-hmm. very funny death and birth spec for my <laughs> cast of death stranding um <laughs> right yeah. So this movie for me made me want to go rewatch The Lobster, and I need to watch Killing a Sacred Deer because you are right. I guess Ryan, like this is a he's got a very he somehow deliver is able to pe- get funded and get projects that his singular vision or whoever his collaborate like this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get my shit. Like no negotiation. Like this is what we're doing. Uh, he has a director with a singular vision, a singular tone, singular style. Like it is him. Um, and for, for the most, like, I, I thought uh, The Lobster was very much that. And I was like, I do not understand <laughs> what you are saying to me. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. And I like The Favor. The Favor was probably the most tame out of the, I don't know. I haven't seen Killing That's probably why I like The Favor. The Favor was have all this stuff. <laughs> and so I didn't, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this movie. I just knew it looked good. And I like Emma Stone a lot. And obviously, Willem the phone. Rami is funny. Uh, but I, man, I love this movie. Uh. I mean, I think as a, I'm selfish, and maybe it's because I come from my, I loving video games where I always want to see something new, something flashy that's going to surprise me. And this movie is all like, I, there's not a single movie uh, that looks like this, like that's yeah, out yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. And with these colors and these costumes and these fucking fisheye fucking <laughs> camera lens uh, in this, in this beautiful score. And these, uh, the the titles, the chapter sequences are just like oh, gorgeous yeah, by them. Those. Like, yeah. I'm just like being <laughs> treated to such a buffet of sights <laughs> and sounds. Yeah. I'm just like, this is incredible. And it's funny. She, they, Emma Stone is so fucking funny. I mean, I already knew that, but it's just such a funny movie. Mm-hmm. Um, great timing. And I like, I just think it's so funny. The, the the trip of Emma Stone taking Mark Ruffalo on this, just breaking this man down, yeah. uh, it's just really fucking hilarious. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm i not a woman and I haven't given much thought about the themes and stuff. So I, I could say I love it from like a performance and style and everything in the craft but i just haven't really digested the themes of the movie at all really other than yeah she wants to be free and she wants to be her own person and she likes having sex and she, i don't know that's cool that's fine with me um but yeah i think this is high up there for me just because again and it's not a passion but it's like man i just i love going to the movies and just sometimes just being completely surprised right. with something that something somebody made or a bunch of people made just mm-hmm. like so much craft so much um such a clear vision and that it comes across, it didn't, doesn't feel like it's being, um, I guess, pretentious, uh, which is, I felt with Lobster, I was like, ah, you need a, I need to, <laughs> we get it, we need to calm down we a little, get it. a little right, too buddy. much for me. And this is like, yep, this is, this is incredibly extra, like, the fucking credits are a goddamn rectangle. Um, yeah, love this movie, love, love, love it, um. Big, big fan. I'm eager to rewatch it now that I know what it is and see if I can you like get more. a little more out of it. Because I was thinking, I was like, why didn't this work for me? And this is overall a more, like, uplifting, whimsical, like, it's it's very serious, but it's also, like, a lot more lighthearted and a lot than most of his movies are just, like, tragedy. It's yeah, a wacky, tragedy. It's a wacky Killing adventure. Killing Deer, which I think is your favorite of his. It is. <laughs> Is the most bummer movie I've ever it's made. Awesome. So I think <laughs> nothing I like good it. happens to anyone in that movie. It is a it's series of starting me. low and seeing how much lower we can go. Uh, it begins at the end of Eileen and gets worse. No, no, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? That one girl. Uh... Does a sings an acapella cover of that Ellie Golding song yeah. to Barry Keogh. 
<laughs> that movie's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I really like this movie, and I kind of want to rewatch. Um, yeah. Anyways, yeah, four things. It's pretty. It's pretty something. It's a very horny. Uh, very horny movie. <laughs> Oh uh, my man, man. <laughs> my man. Uh, not no, it's not a horny. I don't know. I was gonna. It's, it's this isn't a sexual permission movie. to come aboard. That's uh, that's how that movie begins. The first true. one begins that with is... him going up into a pirate ship and yelling, "Oh yeah, permission to come aboard!" Hilarious, <laughs> absolutely hilarious. God, remember how awesome seeing that movie? Oh was my the god. First time was? Aquaman original Aquaman is fantastic. It's very good. Everyone watched it. But we're here to talk about Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom, a sequel that uh, this podcast has been heavily anticipating. <laughs> Carrie hasn't been able to watch it yet. Nope. Uh, James Wan is back. <laughs> the original plan was day one, baby. <laughs> and look at us all now. <laughs> Uh, the DCEU is done, also. The last DCEU film. Yeah, ended with a movie that, uh... Sucks, probably? Uh... It's not a... Inconsequential that... film! Like, yeah, it's... yeah. Like, this is like... Nothing! This is like Ant-Man 1. Nothing yes. in this matters to, like, the, a grander <laughs> scale of things. Even though, like, when you think of, like, what happens in the movie, you think everyone would be involved. Yeah, it's true. Like, you would think Superman would come like, hey, uh... Maybe don't <laughs> burn that. So, you get it. So, okay. so, Aquaman too. So, Aquaman, you know, post-Justice League, uh, he's now the king of Atlantis. Jason Momoa is the king of Atlantis. We found Nicole Kidman. She was stuck at the ham sea in the bottle of the Mariana Trench. Come get to uh, Yeah, yeah. We got her. She's back. We love it. Her his brothers in exile. The fucking weird squid. What kind of people be it? The squid people? Squid desert people? I don't fucking Doesn't know. Doesn't matter. He's in some fucking... Doesn't matter. Movie. Judging by the trailer, he was on the beach doing crunches. Yeah. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren... Oh, oh, Karen, I'll tell you about that. So that's it's amazing. Dolph Lundgren's still here for some reason. Yes, yes, His yes. dad's still at the lighthouse. Uh, but it's been some time. He ha- he's married to Mira. They have a child. They have a baby boy. He's also half a uh, he's half a yeah, Atlantean, he, half human. Because yeah, you know he mm. can talk to the fish. And there's a lot of conversation about being a father. And he's struggling being both dad and the king of Atlantis and Aquaman. How do you juggle all of that? <laughs> We've and, all been there. And Amber Heard is both like in the movie more than you would expect and also mm, not in it at not all. Not in it at all. <laughs> it is fascinating. And like the big thing that I was thinking about. It's is, like somebody like, ah, oh, we can put more of it back in. Yeah. But like <laughs> what's slider. What's weird is like they're both superheroes and like they're both dealing with leading the thing yes, and but being parents. Either. But like all of like, but like Aquaman has so many like conversations with his dad, like the struggles of being a parent. Yeah. And you think you have that fucking conversation. nowhere around, though. You think you'd have that conversation with your wife nope. about <laughs> the difficulties you're having. They oh, share maybe no. two sentences together. But no, it's yeah. always having a bite to kiss with your dad while yeah. the wifey deals with the kid. <laughs> Very funny. But basically, Black Manta is like, I gotta kill Aquaman still. Remember Black Manta in the first yeah. Aquaman? Yeah. But he finally killed his dad. Or yeah. Whatever. Very funny. <laughs> Uh, but he finds a b- mean trident, a very big mean trident that gives him superpowers, mm-hmm. and now he is has this mission to destroy Atlantis and the whole world because Aquaman took away his world, so he'll take away his world for it. And the sure. only thing Aquaman can do, because Amber Heard's busy, <laughs> um, and also from what I've heard from James Wan, that wasn't the plan. <laughs> sure, is he? They need to uh, break Patrick Wilson out of prison. So him and his brother go, can go on an adventure to stop Black Manta to save Atlantis and the world. You oh, forgot yeah. the biggest, most important oh. part. is So this Lost Kingdom. Where is this Lost Kingdom? Well, you know global warming? Oh, and yeah. you know those, I, those sheets of ice that are very bad if they melt? What if I told you King Atlan took away, like, sealed this ancient kingdom, which was run by his brother... Uh, and froze it in those sheets of ice, Aww. and that's why. And now, with enough global warming, the bad guy, who's King Atlan's brother, is able to get out a little bit to communicate to. Uh, oh my God, what's his fucking name? Oh my God, the marine biologist. 
Oh, Randall Park. Randall Park. Yes. Randall Park was back from the first movie. He had a bit in that movie. You probably don't remember. Sure he don't. was in it. No, he was one of the. He was one of the like the. There's a bit where the scientist. Doing, yeah, like a yeah. CNN was like, "This is crazy, whatever." And so he's helping him go, whatever. Uh, and so that's how they find the Trident. The Trident was owned by King Island's brother, who is like toxic, toxic kingdom. We don't know what this kingdom Evil, does. Bad kingdom. But they like smog. And anyways, the thing they were, <laughs> they were the thing they were uh, mining and then melting. The essentially creates a lot of greenhouse gases. Uh, like a lot. Like a lot. And they need to. They, their their plan is to break into all these secure vaults across all of the. Because they had the minerals. Like we can't use this shit anymore. This, this shit sucks for everyone. Yeah. So they're just breaking and stealing like this. Um. This like. Uh, Mac- it's like a giant green bar. This element. <laughs> like this element, and they're just burning it in a volcano. They're not even doing anything. They're just. Burning. They're just burning it, and then it like cuts to like six months later, and see that is like. Uh, the environment's really bad. Like, it's horrible. And Aquaman's like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> we should probably figure out what's happening. Uh, so, yeah. And so the, the goal is to make it hot enough that the sheets of ice are... Fully melted. Fully melted. So the whole, the Lost Kingdom can come back. And all the green skeleton fog monsters can get out and take over the world. Oh. Basically. And uh, this is but only... to kill Aquaman. Nice. Yes. Oh, of yeah, and Mantis is only doing this because he wants to kill Aquaman. Right. Yes. Yeah. Seems like there's gonna be a lot of uh, other fatalities. Yes. And so you know, <laughs> and collateral damage. Jason Momoa breaks out his brother out of jail, and they go on an adventure. You know, again, uh, the, the King Atlan and his brother had disagreements, and you know, uh, Jason Momoa and Patrick oh, Wilson had disagreements. Oh, <laughs> it's very. You see what what wow. made this movie like almost work is like it's very similar to like the first one. It's like a b-side but like you're like oh there's a reason why this is the b-side and not the a-side yeah because like they're going they're just like hopping around in different areas and they're all like interesting but visually like not the weird the... desert places yeah. weird like but the desert bit is not as good as the it's old not one. as good yeah because they did they did a better one the last one weird like forest area this like james bond ass villain like yeah. like fortress and then the fun patrick wilson thing is like when they go into the when he goes to break out he's like skinny and like and he's like, because he hasn't had water in like Yeah, like the king of the hydro, giving him enough water to be alive. Yeah. So like they break him out and they're like running towards the ocean. And like, <laughs> <laughs> he craves the ocean. He craves the ocean. <laughs> as they're being like chased by like, like these weird like bug skeleton monsters, I think they are. Yeah. Yeah. Or the writing bugs. I can't remember. Yeah. And then like they're, they got Aquaman. They almost got Patrick Wilson. And then like falls on the beach and the waves like. Fall over him, and then oh, they come back, s- and then he comes up, and then he is absolutely ripped you immediately. Got the water back. <laughs> it, is, it is absolutely <laughs> awesome, and then he just immediately starts beating them all to death with this Leonard fist. Fucking calamity, again. Oh, <laughs> hydrate. Again. Listen, oh my god. <laughs> listen, this movie made me think. Like, if you were looking for like a traditional like looking Aquaman. Patrick yeah, Wilson he might have been, been it. He would have been like the classic the Aquaman. The classic Aquaman. Because like, give him that blonde hair, get yeah. ripped. Yeah. That Fine. is classic <laughs> Aquaman. Like, I like Jason Momoa's Aquaman. It's very fun, but that is a, this is a good, funny Patrick Aquaman. Patrick Wilson is always a good alternative for any role That ever. is true. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, this then movie. then just non- nothing interesting happens. No, it's yeah, that's weird. that's the most interesting part. That sounds so, so funny. So like, you, you completely bypass. They go to this jungle, <laughs> but you like... To to the point that this movie doesn't go far enough, like, this jungle has huge, giant creatures. Like, all the creatures are huge. Like, they're massive. And it's like a footnote in this movie. <laughs> yeah. It's like... It's funny. It's <laughs> funny, <laughs> but it's like, you could have done a whole bit on this <laughs> octopus playing fucking drums, but nothing <laughs> yeah. is as fun as that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. O- the, o- the octopus playing drums no. is a... <laughs> <laughs> the octopus... <laughs> <laughs> the octopus playing drums is a character in this movie. He's he is their a buddy. Character, yes, he's yeah. their buddy that comes along on their mission. Yeah, but he's, he's not really playing funny. the drums. No. He, he's not playing the drums. The people as much. loved this guy. Yeah, I and did. I did. I did. But yeah, this movie's work because like it has all the stuff, but like for some reason it just doesn't go connect. all the way. It's yeah. like it's like the heart is not there, mm. and like maybe that's because like the villain. I mean, the villain of Aquaman one wasn't very interesting. It was Patrick just, Wilson. Well, like conceptually, because he's like, 
I'm I want to rule the kingdom. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, and he was also mad she, about pollution. Yes, he was mad. <laughs> yes, but again, they had a fight in that giant arena, and that was cool. Was that awesome. was cool. Yeah, there's nothing like that in this movie. No, it's all mid. Like it's a superhero movie. Like it's yeah. Like the king guy, he's just a CGI man. He's not an actor playing him. He's just a monster man. Yeah, he's not. So it doesn't feel. It, it just doesn't feel. It doesn't feel like anything. Again, yeah. the end of Aquaman has all these armies and families of ocean creatures coming together and fighting, and then it ends with a giant fight in the fucking stormy. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, nothing like that in this movie. There's it's nothing. So weird. Yeah. It just feels like again, you mentioned or walking out of the theater. It feels like the first Aquaman's like they're making us do an Aquaman movie. I don't fucking know why, but I don't think we're gonna get another chance to do this. So. <laughs> Go crazy! Dinosaurs in the center of the earth? Sure, I don't fucking know. Octopus with drums? Go ahead, I don't care. And this one is like, we did everything. Yeah, we did everything, and now there's nothing. Yeah. And I feel like I don't know anything about Aquaman comics. Like I know nothing about Aquaman comics. Like there's gotta be more weird guys, cause like he's a weird guy. Yeah, like this is the one where like um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the one where he actually talks to all of the ocean life. Yeah. In this one. And they don't do that. They, they do a bit of it, and that's it. Yeah. They could have done something more. I don't know. Yeah. Tell the fucking starfish to go fucking slice, fucking slap people's heads off. I don't know. Do something crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just, so yeah, this just, movie's just, just disappointing. I think, yeah. but the, like the key of again, Jason Momoa and Patrick Wilson bouncing off each other. Great. That's yeah, great. Love that, it. That That's seemed, fantastic. It seemed from the trailer, it seemed like it would be some some bro bro bro. I just wish they got into more wacky situations. Hilarious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, there is a fun bit about Patrick Wilson eventually trying out a burger. That's a fun bit. That's I like funny that. Bit, yeah. I like that. That's a good bit. Um, and then and then yeah, there's then all the Amber Heard stuff feels so weird just because like they're they're like cutting around her. And like and like maybe because like I knew they would do that like yeah. I was hyper focusing on it it's and that's why it felt so weird. It's especially weird as George Cruz who has no goddamn fucking idea because it was so the conversation was so toxic. I'm not <laughs> oh, same. learning anything about. Same. It. I know nothing. No <laughs> idea. No clue. Not my business. <laughs> so whatever. Um, anyways, Aquaman, I still think you should, well, if it's still theaters, you should watch it at some I'll point, Carrie. Yeah, at yeah, some yeah, point, sure. you should watch it. I think it's fine. It's not horrible. I think people just, I think people are being a little too dramatic. I don't know. Like, if you liked Aquaman 1, this isn't too far off from Aquaman yeah. 1. It's just not as fun and not as It's like big. a, it's like a, because, like, Aquaman 1 was, like, a classic 2000 superhero movie. 100%. And this is the classic 2000 superhero sequel that's, like, Oh, okay. Yeah, hundred percent. This is the same, but a little worse. Yes, yeah, 100%. 100%. There's no Pitbull song in this one. Oh, good. Fuck. <laughs> that was horrible. That was great. I know you thought that's. I think that's what I. That's the moment I officially flipped on that movie. Where I was like, officially. You know, where I was like, you know what? This is pretty good. I don't know. Uh, anyways. <clears throat> Redheads, am I right? Redheads, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Uh, complete tonal change. Uh, I added the last movie here. Oh. Uh, this is Beyond Utopia. This is a documentary that uh, came out a bit, but it finally came on on, on demand uh, in December. Uh, it's on Apple TV for pay, and I don't know, Letterbox just had Apple TV, so that's where I bought it. Um, so this documentary uh, follows um, North Korean def- family of North, Korea, multiple families of North Korean defectors trying to get to South Korea. Uh, so they have, uh, essentially like the family is like followed by a guy. I don't know how they did this, but like, essentially there's a camera guy who is escaping, like doing the whole trek with them. Um, and it is a lot. It is really, again, everything like sounds incredibly stressful. (laughs) Everything stressful, like suck, like, ah, this is awful. Like that, this movie, Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just really well done. Uh, it's really good. I, it's probably going to be one of the nominees for a documentary uh, at the Oscars. Um, it's very good. Uh, so if for some reason you find yourself in the mood for that, <laughs> check it out. It's a uh, it's a little bit of a some rough stuff, but um, the movie has some uh, some happy endings and some sad endings. Um, but yeah, Beyond Utopia, pretty good. Check it out. You'll probably hear more of it at the Oscars. Pretty good. Nice. Anyways, January. 
Yeah. That ain't jack shit, huh? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, we did already watch the masterpiece of January. I was going to say, can we just talk about Night Swim now? But then we have fuck shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll, we'll save it. We'll save it. Night Swim is what we're talking about, which was, again, the first January. The first movie of... the Every the, January, the first movie to count is always a Blumhouse yes. thing. Damn right. Fancy God bless Island. <laughs> Truth or Dare. Megan. Make Mathrigan. Mathrigan, mm, yeah. They know what they're getting. They're doing it. They, they know that this is the time to make money because nothing else is going to come out this I month. guess, yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll talk about Night Swim. Haunted Pool. In January. Wyatt Russell. <clears throat> mean Girls, the musical. But it's not advertised as the musical. Uh, yeah. Do we think this is going to do good? I don't think so. I think... I, I, don't know. I live in the bizarro world where it seems like Paramount itself doesn't have confidence in it. Like, yeah. why is it coming out in January? It's weird. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. Cause I it's mean, just like I understand. Like, it's based on on the musical, which I've heard is popular, mm -hmm. and you think they say the musical because that way people who but they're like convinced that if you say it's a musical, that people don't watch it. Which I don't know. Whatever. I don't get that. But like, but then like people just think it's a remake of Mean Girls. Yes, and people are like, "What the fuck and is this?" People. Love Mean Girls. Yes. So they're not gonna give a shit about this. Yeah, that's so. I don't understand. But they also do care. It's a weird conundrum around like equals <laughs> profit? Question mark. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. There are songs in this movie. I'm interested to see what they are. I like Mean Girls. Um. Again, it's this doesn't have any, like uh. Oh my God, what's your fucking name from Scream? Scream Six and Scream Five. Uh, Wednesday Adams. Oh, 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 Jenna Ortega. Like having her and something like, you need like star. I feel like this. I don't think this movie doesn't have any young stars. I think the girl who's playing Regina is, is really popular. Is she? Renee Rapp, I think. All right. That sounds familiar. I think but... she's big. I, okay. I've heard her name a few times. I think she I'm might... also old as fuck, so I don't know. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. no, we're old. Yeah, you you are thirty now. We don't need to know about any of these. Uh, so she was in the rap. Sex Lives of College Girls, but that show wasn't huge. But mm -mm. I know Andrew Andrew Rice is in stuff, but I think it's just mostly she does have a million followers on Instagram. I don't know why though. Well, <laughs> oh, I just out. I just know Andrew Rice from Mayor of East Town. That's okay. So maybe I'm just out of touch. But oh yeah, Angie's Betty Brandt in the new uh... Spider Man movies. That's it. Oh. Okay, great. That bit character. <laughs> great. Um. So yeah, I have no clue how this lands. I will probably watch it. Yeah, I'll probably see it. I'll probably watch it. Don Joe wants to watch this as one of her normal movies, you know? And also, I like Mean Girls. Yeah, Mean Girls is good. But I... Uh, John Hamm is in this, apparently. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the do he's a gym uh, he's instructor. He's a gym instructor. Yeah. yeah. The, the, he will get pregnant. Yeah. Oh, he's that guy. But yeah, I mean, I'll watch it. I'm I'm not trying to be... I'm just confused. <laughs> Everything has left me confused <laughs> about... The marketing movies left me confused. I'm, yeah. I'm not a feel. I'm not watching The Beekeeper. What? <laughs> I hate this so much. I like this trailer. This trailer makes me so mad. It plays in front of... As a scammer. <laughs> it, it it plays in front of like every YouTube video. I That's know. true. That's and it's, it's driving me insane because it feels like such a like, you know, when the system is broken, only Jason Statham can stop it. Like, <laughs> fuck off, you piece of shit. What is wrong with you? God, and you... Oh, he's a beekeeper. Dude. Shut up. Bees are important for the ecosystem, I understand. But shut up. <laughs> God damn it. I hate this trailer. Jeez. I hate this trailer I, so much. I, I enjoy the trailer fine. The well, yeah, you're 30. You're, you're basically <laughs> on your deathbed. <laughs> Yeah, you're fucking old, you're fucking old man. <laughs> of course, you're like, oh, it's grown. Jesus, David. Honey is flammable. I, I, who knew? I did not uh, know. When we I'm were, not watching this movie though. I'll, I might watch it. Man. When we were, when we had just started recording, I got a notification that I saw that my friend was doing a double feature of Night Swim and The Beekeeper today, <laughs> and he 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 messaged me and was like. I'm sorry, Carrie. Night Swim was my favorite movie of 2024 <laughs> until five minutes into the beekeeper. <laughs> so we'll see. This seems like something you and Greg will see on a Tuesday. Oh, maybe. I don't think Gre I, Greg's probably not interested. <laughs> I'll definitely see it on a Tuesday. <laughs> you gotta get the $5 Tuesday crowd for this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the Book of Clarence. Um, Lakeith Stanfield. Lakeith Stanfield. I like him a lot. I do like him a lot. Um, 
this this the title of this sounds like it would also be a musical, but I don't. It's a movie. It's a movie with a lot of music. But yeah, it's not a musical. Uh, well, that's what I can tell. Who, who that no, no one tells me anymore. <laughs> it's all a surprise. Um, but yeah, I don't this know. This movie looks interesting. It does look I interesting. I might check this one out. Mm -hmm. Maybe it shows here. I, I feel, like, I feel like it will not. I, I was going to say they've shown us the trailer a bunch of times. But, but they, that doesn't they, mean shit they, anymore. Yeah, they did that with fucking... They made us sit through that fuck-ass theater camp trailer <laughs> 10 million times. And then never, <laughs> never I was like, it. I would like to see it. Yeah, I'll see it. <laughs> no. Fuck. <laughs> No, you can't see it actually. Um, it's not, have you seen it on Hulu yet? Yeah, yeah I watched it, but yeah, I would have seen it. It was a good movie. Yeah, yeah. I, like, it would have been the, fun to see in theaters the trailer with friends. That I saw a million times. I was like, yeah, I'm interested. I'm sold. Yeah, <laughs> can I buy it? What you were doing is you were advertising <laughs> something to me, and I am telling you verbally, I would I'm like in. to see it in your I'll establishment. Buy a ticket. No, 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 no. Fuck you, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> but I love Ben Flat. Please, please. Uh, uh and oh. Uh, this uh, the last movie I added here because we didn't have any. Oh, I one. needed to. I needed to add something. Oh yeah, go ahead. Um, a Daisy Ridley movie called Sometimes oh, what I the f Yes. Sometimes I think about dying. Huh? It is based on a short film I watched that was very nice and very sad, just about like an oppressed lady. I was um, thinking of the Marsh King's daughter. No, no, yeah, no, no, I was thinking. I was like, why is Brian bringing that up? Because <laughs> no, I no. saw that on the list, and I was like, no, I'm not adding that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's based on a short film I've seen, and the short film was very nice, very sweet, very sad, just because it's just about a sad woman, and then she she like meets someone, and then you know she starts thinking about life a little better, uh, mostly through the idea of you know communicating these difficult feelings as opposed to just keeping them pushed down and letting them keep boiling over to like consume you. Very nice idea for a short film. Daisy Ridley's in it. I, I want her... It sucks that like out of all the Star Wars people, it feels like she's done the least. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's weird. So I want I want her to have a win. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Because yeah. Adam um, Driver, Oscar Isaac are killing it right now. She was in Murder on the Orient Express. That was, that was that was like, mid Star Wars. Also, that, that was <laughs> eight years ago, Gary. And it was awesome. <laughs> There's also one of 40 people in that movie. There's also in Chaos Walking. Well, that... Oh, that no, sh exactly. <laughs> she needs something because... But this is also a small movie. It is this a small is movie. a tiny movie. It is a very tiny movie. But so we'll she see if needs it gets here. something because she is very good in Star Wars, The Last Jedi. No one is good in Rise of Skywalker. So I just wanted to have something, so... I'm looking forward to this one. I hear they're still doing a, another Star Wars movie with the. Uh... That's I've read that they want to do a movie with her character. Yeah. So. Which is like okay, is that is that next... not just the next Star Wars movie? No, it's a <laughs> okay. It's like, what? Okay. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. want it. I don't care. care. Life's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> so George, what is? What is the Society of Snow? Uh, the Society of Snow. So this is another one that's probably going to be a might be an international um, nominee. Uh, so this is just dropped on Netflix, I think, this week. So this is a movie about the 1972 uh, Uruguayan, yeah, Uruguayan uh, plane that crashed on the way to Chile in the Andes Mountains, and the players wound up eating each other. So this is a, this is an actual event that happened, and it inspired a lot of like, wouldn't that be crazy if your plane crashed and then you're you eat a guy? Yeah, exactly. It's what? If, yeah, exactly. And so this is a movie based on the actual thing that happened. I seen forty two minutes of this movie at a family gathering up until the part where they're gonna start eating each other and we're gonna eat dinner. So I was like, I'm gonna turn this off. <laughs> um, but it was really good. I liked what I saw so far. Uh, it seems very good. Um, so yeah, check out. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. That seems good. Check out the Society of the Snow, maybe. Uh, that's it. That's January, baby. January. Nah, nah. The Beekeeper and Night Swim doing a lot of heavy January lifting. The quality. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> you might just need to do the best of next month and move <laughs> Night Swim to February. I don't know. <laughs> what? I don't know. It's rough. No, no. Sorry, sorry. Why didn't they... I'm just so perplexed with Rebel Moon. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank God. I had so much to talk about. <laughs> Why not spend money on at least a theatrical release for this garbage? I don't know. Like, you care so much that you're like, it's gotta be PG-13, Zach. 
You're gonna uh, we're gonna get you two parts in two director's cuts. So that's two. That's four movies essentially. And we're not even doing a January theater. I don't. This, fucking... this is why I feel like the executives. I don't at understand. Netflix, for some reason, they have infinite money, even though the company is seems to always be at a net <laughs> loss. <laughs> to be fair, they did make a. They were finally the password change did help them. It, it, oh, it completely God. worked for them. It completely Crazy. worked. Crazy. So now, yeah, that's uh, so they're doing good now, I guess. Um, Thank God. I love it when a big company comes out on top. <laughs> so more Rebel Moon, please. More Rebel Moon, please. <laughs> Is this the season of the Witch or season mm-hmm. of the Witch trailer? Watching the Nicolas Cage's season of that's the Witch. That's my favorite season. Um. So yeah, I guess look forward to January. I don't know. It might be. We might be uh, catching up uh, with some movies that are gonna get. Right. Yeah. yeah, we're probably in the running for the Oscars. I want to see Zone of Interest. Yes. Where the fuck is that coming yeah, here? I, I want to see. Give the, me in that zone. All of us strangers, because I love Andrew want, Scott so much. I don't think I think the Taste of Things is gonna get here in February, probably. Mm. I want, are you familiar with this? The, which one? The Taste of Things. Julia Binoche. Uh, uh, she's a chef, and all I understand is was like it is a very very sexy and tasty cooking movie let's go that sounds good so uh, i like um so yeah i don't know anything else that we haven't seen that hasn't gotten here yet um not watching my stream anyways um me and my mom are gonna go see the color purple at some point. oh yeah so. i want to see that i'm i am fascinated by all the production stories that are coming out of this movie that apparently was ran like a shit show Oh yeah. yeah I so I'm excited no for more. No one was happy making it, and everyone that was like, "Still fucking color purple." I'm doing it because it's a very important black story. I want to do it. Right. No one else seems here to do it. Okay. So yeah, awesome. We shall see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. I almost watched the actual color purple, but then everyone was like, "Because that's a Steven Spielberg movie based mm-hmm. on a book," and then everyone was like, "This feels like a very uh, Steven Spielberg adaptation." Mm. of a yeah so everyone's like it's fine i was mm-hmm. like oh maybe i'll read the book then i don't know so anyways well report back we were talking about <laughs> december's the color purple Let's go. for uh january yes. episode mm-hmm. uh anyways ryan lance if, what's up if rebel the director's cut of rebel moon comes out oh, in God. the next few weeks and i'm forced to watch it forced and you're forced to, to watch, watch it, it. <laughs> um, uh letterbox.com slash film piece that is me that's where i post thoughts on films and you can read about them crazy concept right it's uh, a new thing i'm trying <laughs> i'm trying once again i'm reacting to the trailer we're watching right now remember when vince vaughn was uh leading every man in films uh ron howard you know? got his brother in there uh no, I don't remember okay. that. Anyways, I have no idea what movie this is <laughs> yeah, that we're this looking at. But, uh, Ron it's, Howard, Vince Vaughn movie yeah, with Kevin James. With Kevin James. Uh, Carrie, where can folks find your opinions on maybe the movies we watch in January? Uh, you can find me on Letterboxd uh, just by searching my first name, Carrie. K-A-R-R-I-E. Uh, and you can follow me at jcruzalvarez26 where I will be watching the other one hour and 30 minutes of Society of Snow. Let's go. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, listeners. We got to find out I what movie got... this is. <laughs> so, Bayo, so this is, is it? a, so listen, this movie trailer watching in a hat, like we said, it's got uh, fucking by Ron Howard. Ron, it's talking about Ron <laughs> Howard. It's got Channing Tatum. It's got Vince, Vince Vaughn, Vaughn and Kevin James. Kevin James and Jennifer Connelly when and Winona Ryder. What and Queen Latifah? <laughs> what the fuck is this movie? Well, I have all no of the clue. listeners are screaming at their. At yeah, their... <laughs> this is clearly the internship, which is not. That's got Owen Wilson in it, I, as I understand. They are delaying the, the it's title. Also the Google logo in every background yeah, shot. Yeah, the Google <laughs> title. Oh, yeah, in that movie. Um, but not a writer though. Pretty good. She's pretty good. She's pretty they good. are delaying the title. Oh, there's something this is really, really funny. funny this is something. This joke is gonna get you to buy a ticket, folks. Oh, because James is, is They are just giving you know, this whole scene in this movie trailer. To leading man Vince Vaughn, of course. It is. Okay, he's giving the toast. The, the di- dilemma. No idea what that movie Never is. Heard dilemma. <laughs> like, like, well, Ron Howard. 
Well, our oh. dilemma was we were so confused <laughs> over what this was. Coming soon. Anyways. Oh, when? <laughs> January. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, folks, if uh, that didn't cause you to unsubscribe, until next time. We don't know what will. Bye-bye. <laughs>